Okay. Okay, so um, one of the first steps uh, when we're done uh, running coupling calculations um, on the HPC um, or one of our other systems is to take those coupling files and convert them into uh, the Redfield tensor. And so this is important because it's going to allow us to um, have the data both in matrix form and um, a visual representation of transition probabilities um, for the sets of uh, states that we're interested in. So oh, uh, well, I guess I'm... John, John, just a second. Please stop uh, the audience and ask if anyone wants to... Uh, otherwise, if anyone wants to stop you and ask uh, you a question, because uh, if you miss fundamentals, then there is no reason to go further. You better okay. ask and, and lead the discussion. Okay. Does anyone have a question at this point um, so far? What is a coupling? Is it like a car part? <laughs> Very good question. Okay, so um, when we're interested in uh, the dynamics of a system like uh, Dr. Killen was talking about, um, we're interested in how um, electron density um, and the total wave function can change from uh, one point in time to another um, with the motion of atomic um, positions. And so when we're able to um, calculate a total wave function for um, a set of atomic positions and do that, say, a thousand times along a one picosecond trajectory, um, we're able to compare the wave function from one point in time to another. Um, and so looking at um, this wave function overlap from one time to another is considered a non-abatic coupling. It was kind of not a car part. <laughs> made up because Aaron knew about it, but uh, Daniel, Dane, and Fatima. Do not hesitate. You, you, you may uh, because in front of the rest of the world, you will be leaders in in this area. Ask now. So the uh, couplings is the last thing that we covered on uh, previous knowledge transfer session. So it is the in some sort probability for one electronic orbital to convert into another electronic orbital due to nuclear motion. But those those coupling files are very raw material. You cannot immediately use them for computation. So you need to uh, cook them to make them tasty. It is what John is doing. How accurate are these probabilities and are they believed to be true? <laughs> um, so um, we we can get close to um, experimental values for certain types of systems, um, and so with our types of calculations, as with the majority um, of computational chemistry, um, there are approximations uh, within our methodology that will fail. Um, for this type of system, and so the accuracy uh, can be greatly reduced um, depending on the chemical system. Um, but for um, materials that are uh, more rigid, so pure inorganic materials, um, things that are confined, um, such as quantum dots um, that can be restricted um, to a single K point, um, our methods have been found to be reasonably accurate, um, at least up to this point. I have a question. Mm -hmm. What is your title tell us from NAC to RRR? What is RRR? Or are well, you going so to, I guess, to define it later? Well, RRR um, is the symbol that we put in. Um, for, well, it stands for the Redfield tensor. Um, so anytime you see RRR um, inside the codes, um, that's what it's describing or trying to define parts of. And so the image on the right part of the screen there is a visualization of um, the tensor that is RRR, which will come out of the non-abatic couplings. Okay. 
So in very rough saying, not for the general public, uh, element of RRR of Redfield tensor is coupling element squared. So coupling is a matrix element of the non-diagonal uh, matrix element of Hamiltonian, mm -hmm. and RRR is a fermi golden rule element, so matrix element squared. But uh, do not tell it in public. There are much more details here. It's over oversimplified. Just to, to yeah. generate the Okay, please keep going. Okay. Um, so uh, when we're interested in calculating um, this type of tensor, what we'll want to do is on a local computer that has MATLAB installed, um, build a new directory for MATLAB. Um, and in this directory, there's only three types of files that you need. Um, the first one um, is the set of files that's produced during the coupling calculation. Um, and so generally, they're just the coupling dot and then numerical value um, for some range that we're interested in. Um, if we're looking at spin polarized calculations, um, you're going to see something come out as either coupling 0 0.01 and then numeric value um, and 0 0.02, or uh, sometimes you might see up or down just depending on what was um, output within the script. Um, so generally, we have anywhere from 10 to 1,000 coupling files that we'll use for this calculation. Uh, the second type of file is the energy pop. And so um, an example of this energy pop file is on the right side of the screen. Uh, basically, what it is is it's just a file that contains um, the list of electronic states um, generated within uh, an electronic structure calculation. So on the screen itself, um, that was a screenshot from MATLAB. So ignore the very left column because that's just a line number. Um, so the last three columns in that um, image are just the orbital value, um, the energy of that orbital, and then the population. And so here we're able to see that um, in this case, we would find our HOMO value to be at 675. Um, and then LUMO jumping up to um, the next one at 676. Um, and so the third type of file that we'll need for this is um, labeled as a correlation file. And so there's going to be lots of iterations. So um, you might have a correlation underscore, you know, version 2 or correlation underscore um, some other set of um, indicators that the person was using. Um, but so this .m is a MATLAB uh, script type file. And so that's what we're going to need um, to take this energy pop and the coupling files and turn it into um, the Redfield tensor. And so there's a couple modifications um, that we'll need to make. Um, one of the things is, so in the energy pop file, uh, because we're reading um, all these files in uh, as, as different matrices, what we'll want to do is we'll want to trim the energy pop file to include only the, the range of orbitals that was investigated during the coupling calculation. So if you look at the input overlap file in one of the directories from coupling, you should see two values, and those will be your initial and final um, states within um, this correlation file. And so I've highlighted um, the top chunk of the correlation file, and you can see it on the right. Um, and so there's four things that uh, we'll need to modify specific to our systems um, listed on the bottom left and then color coordinated uh, with the image on the right. So the top one is going to be an indication of uh, what the HOMO value, what the orbital number is. And then the O min and O max are just the orbital minimum and orbital maximum. Um, in terms of um, just the index value given. So here, um, uh, 600, what was it, 630 to 700 um, is the range. Um, and then the third thing we'll want to take a look at are the number of coupling files. So sometimes we're only interested in a very short period, um, so range from 1 to 10. Sometimes it's 1 to 1,000. Um, and so inside the correlation file, you'll see there are loops that build um, or read in all of the different numeric values for the coupling files. And so um, in this case, um, two of them are open because I shortened this up um, just to do some test runs. And then one of them I have commented out. 
Um, but there's generally three different locations to just make sure that you can change it um, to where that value needs to be. Uh, the last thing is the number of steps uh, to take. So in this example that I have on there, I only ran one through 10. Um, and so you can see this line of TTT equals uh, 10 minus one. So that first value of 10 um, should equal whatever the highest coupling value is. Um, and then the line below it um, is a time from one to uh, nine. And so this nine value is generally gonna be um, the highest coupling value minus two, or sorry, minus minus one there. And then again, you can see 10 is, uh, is put back into that third line. So there are just three locations for when you're changing time you need to be aware of. And so execution of this is just like a standard MATLAB script. Um, you're gonna be in your directory in MATLAB and you can either do it two ways. One is just to type in the name of the MATLAB script and hit enter. Um, or if you double click that file and open it, there are options at the top to run the file. So you can do it either way. Um, and if for some reason, you know, you missed a number um, or things aren't equal um, with the indice values, you're gonna see an error code pop up. And so the main results out of this are an RRR file, which is just um, a large matrix with the transition probability values that we'll use um, forward and going with um, producing the dynamics. Um, but there's also um, some other things that get produced. So the RRR file itself, um, there's a .pdf that is an image, um, but there will also be a number of things that can pop up on your screen. Um, so this .fig is just the MATLAB figure file and that you can go ahead and modify. And then there's also two plots of gap law. Um, so their rates just versus the dissipated energy of the transition and then a log value of this. And so there's two examples um, here. So the one on the left is just the rate versus um, the specific energy of that transition. And then the image on the right is the log of these rates versus the transition between two specified orbitals and then uh, best fit lines uh, have been drawn in, at least with the script that I have. And so um, the main result visually is here in this RRR file. Um, and so it should look something like this where it's a bar plot and you can see the majority of the values um, or large values are along the diagonal, which is what we would expect. Uh, because those are going to be the transitions closest in energy. Um, and so there's a script on the right um, that I use to try and automatically generate this. And so the, the rest of the files or the rest of these slides are just um, imaging uh, things. Um, so if you just would do a figure and then plot in your RRR, you'd see something like this. Um, you can start putting in labels um, and markers and um, do some changing to um, how it's uh, visualized, just depending on your preferences, um, and coloration for uh, something that uh, looks a little bit better. And so this last slide, um, I don't know if it's in the version you have, um, but if you run the script and have this pasted in there, it should do everything for you, and this should be what pops up in your um, dot fig uh, image, and then you can just go in and export it as a, a PNG or TIFF or something. Um, and so, yeah, that is what I have. Okay, but then, John. So, any any questions? So, if you're seeing it for the first time and never practiced, better better ask now, because John is going to defend thesis. Um, he can be heard in far away from here, so use your chance to ask. Don't hesitate. You're getting, getting grades for questions. So what do, what do the RRR figures actually mean, really? So um, what the RRR, um, what this tensor provides is transition probability from one state to another. Um, and so um, if you look on the X and Y axis um, on this plot, 
you'll see that there's things like Lumo plus five, Homo and Homo minus five. Um, and so if we're interested in a transition from um, say Homo to um, Lumo, that would correspond to almost the very middle, I mean, not exactly the middle, but almost the very middle um, square that's on this plot. Um, and so the, the amplitude or height of these bars is gonna give us an idea of how likely this transition is. Um, so, um, so say down here on the bottom, you have something that's you know Lumo plus 10 to Lumo plus 11. Um, there are these two tall red bars. So for that sp specific transition, um, the probability is high, but if you would go Lumo plus 10 to Lumo plus nine, um, there's almost no amplitude, meaning that transition um, is not likely to happen. Makes sense. More questions? If it is not the case, I thank John once again. <laughs> Whoops, that wasn't supposed to happen. If if you, you wave the hand, you see the delay. <laughs> uh, or if, uh, if you just turn turn the head, see? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, the next is Yulun. <clears throat> 